Hi everyone, today we're gonna make a really cool experiment. We will use induction to heat metals. The idea is to produce a high power electromagnetic field that will induce a huge electric current in metals. To start, we will reach the limits of our induction forge and, as usual, we will explain how it works. For curious ones, there is a detailed electric diagram at the end of the video. We test our machine. We notice that the consumed current increases immediately when we introduce metal in the coil. All this extra power is transformed into heat. First test, heat a big screwdriver. There is it. In only a few seconds, it becomes red hot. We try bigger, a 50 grams weight. We put it inside the coil and try to maintain the current at 15 amps, which represents a power of 360 watts. In less than a minute, the weight becomes red hot and heats up to 800 degrees. The coil doesn't heat by itself, it's mostly the weight that warms it up. It's very impressive to see such a hot object. Well, we have to admit that the rest was damaged. We will see what we can do with the aluminum foil. The thinnest parts become incandescent and end up releasing a very intense light. What if you try to hit a kilogram weight? Because of the heat loss by connection and convection, we can't hit it red hot, but still, it reaches more than 300 degrees. Even better, we put an aluminum pencil sharpener in the forge. This metal has a melting point of only 660 degrees we can expect an interesting reaction. Mmm, it doesn't seem to like. For even more bizarre tests, check out the end of the video. We will now explain briefly how our induction forge works. First of all, we need a system that transforms the direct current from the power supply into a sinusoidal current with a frequency near 100 kHz. For that, we use a simple but efficient assembly that we will present you in detail in another video about wireless power transfer. What happens in the coil? It produces an electromagnetic field which, as it's the case in a transformer, can be received by a second coil which is then going to transform the field back into electricity. The transmitted power density is so significant that a single spin coil generates enough voltage and current to light up a car bulb. The retrieve current is very high, we can even melt a small wire that heats up with the dual effect. You can imagine that a metal block immersed in the field is the same as a one spin wire on short circuit with itself. The voltage is low, but the current is huge, 100 amps, which explains the heating. We are now going to make the link between our system and induction cooktops that you all know. We will also see if we can light a bulb using the electromagnetic field. The cooktop refuses to work if it doesn't detect enough metal. So we place a pan so that the hot plate starts and the bulb lights up. Obviously, it wouldn't be practical to place the pan in a coil. The transmitter is a flat coil made to hit a surface. 
We reproduce the induction cooktop so that it will be clearer. You only have to roll up a wire and to cover it with a plate that resists to the temperature gradient. We tried with standard glass and we had a funny surprise. We add the small pan, let it heat up, and we can indeed boil water in it. For those who want to make an induction forge, they will also need the power supply that goes with it. We are working with a very low voltage, which is safer, but a high current to have a decent power. We made our own power supply, 24 volts, 18 amps, by using two supplies from a first generation Xbox 360. A little physics top on what we call the Curie temperature. <laughs> from a certain temperature, a ferromagnetic material is no longer sensitive to magnetism. We made a little pendulum that worked with this phenomenon. When the metal rod is hot enough, the magnet doesn't attract it anymore. Then, when it's cooled, it's attracted again. This goes on and on. Why are we talking about the curry point? Well, we find the same phenomenon in our induction forge. Take a look at the ammeter. The current increases slightly when the temperature rises, and then it falls down suddenly to a lower value when the metal is red hot. Only because it's no longer sensitive to magnetism. We understand that there is not only the electric current flowing in the metal which explains the heating, but also the losses by magnetic hysteresis for ferromagnetic metals until their curry point. Now we're gonna overheat this electric motor while it's spinning. At first, it spins faster and faster. Here, it starts having trouble. That's it, it just passed away and it's completely stuck. We won't just stop here, we keep heating it up. 